Um, we've talked about RMC best fit for flow frequency or just frequency analysis. We're going to talk about RMC RFA for reservoir frequency analysis. We have a different program that we the RMC has built, um, kind of precursor to best fit. It's called RMC Raft RRFT. Um, or otherwise known as rainfall runoff frequency tool. It's an online web-based tool. So I'm just going to go over it <clears throat> briefly, um, give a little bit of background for it, and then do just a quick live dem demonstration just so you kind of have a feel for it. It's available for USACE at this point. Um, it's not available outside of USACE yet. I'm working on that. <clears throat> it has to do with uh, because it uses its online tool, so it's using Amazon Cloud for all of its um, data processing and it's built on the cores Amazon cloud, so we can't give access to somebody outside the core. So we're trying to work through those issues now, but <clears throat> it's available for core now. So, all right. Uh, so again, we're going to go over this, uh, web based tool raft, which stands for again, rainfall runoff frequency tool. So I'm going to go step through a variety of topics, mostly focusing on the tool itself. So what is raft and basically kind of what's in it, what's it doing? Um, what can raft, you know, be used for and then, uh, demonstrate raft in a kind of a live demo session, like I said, just so you can, and, and then cover a few examples. So you can see kind of what's going on and where it fits in this whole world that we're doing with, for the flood hazard. All right. So raft, uh, is built, it was built to be an intuitive five-step, um, web-based stochastic model tool. So the first step is to add precipitation frequency analysis to like NOAA Atlas 14, um, or you can use any kind of uh, site-specific or any other analytical curve for precipitation. You can bring those in. Um, the next step is to create a stratified sample of the precipitation frequency. Uh, this step uses an importance and stratified sampling approach uh, that's meant to, it really helps greatly reduce the number of simulations required to produce a viable frequency curve, especially in the upper end of the curve where we're interested. So then we use a hydrologic model to route the rainfall. That's usually bringing in an HMS model. Um, and then, <clears throat> then step four is to create a sampled execution using the previous three inputs that routes the rainfall data through an HMS model to produce sampled results. This is the stochastic modeling part of this um, application. And the final step is the calculation of the total probability curve, uh, which can be developed for flow frequency, like a peak flow frequency, volume frequencies, or stage frequency. So, so and really wrapped is meant to be this simple um, to walk through and complete for a rainfall, a rainfall runoff stochastic model. So, um, all right. So one of the biggest reasons for developing raft is to provide, you know, engineers with a tool that's simple to use and that can produce rainfall runoff stochastic modeling results for studies that you might have. So, but maybe the question is why we even need the results from a rainfall runoff stochastic model. So like, you know, most dams have less than a hundred years of record or getting, yeah, so usually a dam safety study prob you know, problems that come up for the dams are, you know, much more rare than 100 years. So again, as we've talked about with um, using prior information, um, we have regional rainfall and regional skew information. So when we have regional precipitation frequency, we want to be able to add that to our data. So RAF provides a way to inform volume frequency studies with that regional precipitation frequency information. And it does it not with just individual discrete runs. So we're not just running eight individual runs off of Atlas 14 at cer certain AEPs, um, but we're actually doing it in a stochastic approach. We're running thousands and thousands of runs. So that means the, the factors, um, we, the results have factored in things like our hydrologic parameters, um, uncertainty, so uncertainty in loss rates or transforms, um, hiatograph uncertainty, so different type of storm patterns, uh, both spatial and temporal. And, and then of course the rainfall depths, differences, uncertainty in the depth. So for the core, um, dam safety studies, Bayesian estimation analysis and best fit, of course, is used. So the best fit, the Bayesian approach allows us to incorporate all this. Um, so uh, for the, the, so what we're doing for most of our dams is we're, we're coming up with the volumes and the volume distribution to apply to like we saw, uh, we will see here in a minute on how we uh, put that into best fit. But if we are looking at say FERC dams or 
NRCS dams or other army dams that don't have any data. They don't have elevation, they don't have inflows. This process, you can produce stage frequency curves for dam safety studies on those type of dams, even if you have no data available. And you can have a viable frequency curve to be able to do your hazard calculations. Sorry about that. <clears throat> With WebEx running and switching from extended to duplicate. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, let's see if I can get this little guy not locking the screen. Okay. So, this is the website. Um, pretty straightforward website. Uh, when it comes to actually USACE users, uh, it'd contact me. I'd give you the website, username and password. Um, it's all username and password specific. And give you additional information on how to how to actually run through this. So um, this is the main website. It goes through the five steps, precipitation, stratified sampling, HMS model execution and results right on the home page. Um, so then there'd be a, a sign in, which I'm already signed in here. Um, you have an analysis tab. And um, you'll see more. So when you pop it up, if you're using this yourself, you would see the list of studies in this analysis tab that you have created. So if you come in here first, there should be none in there. Then you, as you create them, it'll be a list of them. So you can go back into it. Um, you can add descriptions of how you want um, or whatever you might want to do here. This is just your list of all the studies you've done. So I, I can get to all the studies. That's why there was a longer list. So let's, I'm going to just kind of jump through and um, play around a little bit. I don't, I think I was going to put, a couple of files on here, but I forgot. So we'll just we'll just play around and look around at it. So <laughs> um, always we start out with the general tab. This is just basically where we just name it, give it a description, select your units, which hopefully most of the time is going to be English. Um, but you can do metric if you want. Um, and then we've got options to set the the number of digital output. Um, it was doing like 16, 17 digits. So now you can. Tell it how many digits you actually want to see um, for both general numbers and for AEP values. So, so that's just kind of your general setup, right? So, uh, you can use if you saw there's next and back tabs on here, um, but also we have like transitional errors up here, so you can kind of see from step to step. Again, it should be pretty intuitive, like as you kind of move across um, to the results. So we'll go to precipitation. Um, you. Again, in here, you have three different type of precipitation frequency studies you can add. The primary one will be NOAA Atlas 14. That's what you're going to use like most of the time, unless you have a site specific for some reason. Maybe up in like the Northwest or something, they have a lot of site specifics. And there's some other places too, but you can put those in the site specific ones as analytical or empirical curves. But NOAA Atlas 1 is what we would select most of them. As soon as you select the analyst type, it opens up this information down here for the type that you a data that you have. So I'm a, the study of this one over here is a no atlas one for one day. So this is a, a little small watershed. <clears throat> so you would bring the shape file in, um, just drop it. You just drop it in this box and it immediately pops up over here. And hopefully depending on where it is, you have the option for, um, it's kind of off the screen here. Let me scroll up a little bit. So all of the uh, current NOAA Atlas 14s are in here. So volume one through 11. And then if you really want, you can go out into the Pacific Ocean to volume five. And if you do any studies out there, hopefully you get to travel to those islands. Um, but we do have the volume five Atlas 14 for those islands out there if you need them. So, but otherwise, most of them will be in here. So basically, this just allows you to bring in the shape file for your watershed select the the volume at the atlas volume for that watershed where your region is you can select durations from atlas 14 again from five minutes to 60 days just like so this is all the atlas 14 data is right here so you don't have to process it anywhere else you just come in here you drop your shape in you select the volume your duration you come in with an aerial reduction factor so this one happens to be one because this is a super small basin but you will have to know what aerial reduction factor you need to apply before coming in here because you know atlas 14 is point data if you got a thousand square miles, you need the rainfall for a thousand square mile basin, not the point. So there's an aerial reduction that you apply. And so that's it. So you, you put that information in there and then you basically run, um, you come down here and you push the process 
uh, Atlas 14 grids. So this chart would normally be empty, but it takes pretty quick. It's pulled all the precip data for the Atlas 14. If that's all you needed for a study, then that's all you need. You can come in here and you can export that data and move on. You don't have to pre-process it with another tool. So this is what I use now instead of MapView or, or GIS. Go ahead. I think it'll accept, yeah. I mean, we use Albert areas for almost all of our projects. So it's almost always comes in with that, but I, I think except, yeah. <clears throat> and we're gonna make this a lot smarter as we move forward so that you can, it'll select the volume for you and things like that. And you can see like maps where, where it might fit because some, some watersheds cross volumes. And so we're gonna continue to make this a little bit easier and smarter to use, but right now, yeah, you can bring it in. So, again, it, it just processes the preset for, uh, Atlas 14. And this is usually all you really need um, for processing what we need for best fit for volumes. You just really need to calculate the 10, 100, and 1,000 year. Um, but maybe you want to do a G, GEV extract, which is usually for precept. A lot of times we are going to use GEV ex, uh, distribution to fit precept. So that's the default. Um, you have the option to change the ERL. Um, so that's a value that kind of helps define how wide the uncertainty is. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in 135 in here because I want the bounds to be tighter around the 10, 000, the thousand year instead of the the, the hundred year. So the, the the original ERL that comes up is just based on kind of the average. And I like to look at the thousand year, but because I don't want to be over or under. Anyway, so the point is, you can do a GEV, you can do a bootstrap real quick, and you can extrapolate the data and use that for your study. So from there, we can move on forward to sampling. Um, so real quick, we use importance and stratify sampling with extreme value type as our importance data. So basically what that means, it is with those, so the strata, see, you can see all the different colors, that's our stratification. So we've broken up the curve into bins. The different bins and then we have so many we have certain amount of bins you the user can select however much they want they can do so i'm doing 20 bins 250 events per bin so it's 5,000 events right so um you can break that up as you want i like more bins i like more events per bins than more bins but um so but the point of the importance part of it using extreme value um type one uh is that it forces more of the bins in the upper end of the curve. So, and what I mean by that, like a lot of types might be uniform. Let's see if this will, uh, I don't wanna break it. So basically if you do uniform, if all, all the bins would be over there from 0.5 to 0.1, like 90% of them would be on that end. So the extreme value, the importance, it allows us to sample at the upper end of the curve uh, a lot easier and so we can use a lot less runs to define that term so anyway that's the stratified and sampling so now you've got precip you have a way of sampling it uh you just add in here you just simply drop in your hms model currently we're using 4.9 as our version we drop it in here and then you just add it. that's it so your hms 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 model for us typically uses three Hydrographs, three sets of basin models that have different loss rates or transforms. Um, so that's kind of nine different um, basin or nine different simulations in HMS that would pop in here um, as, as, a, as a minimum. So then we have the execution and we have the sampling execution. So that this is where all this, everything's pulled together for stochastic. So we just were able to select everything. Uh, we have compute resources. So we Again, it's on the cloud. We use it, typically use extra high, so we're using all the compute power that we can. Um, you add your models, you add your stratification, sampling. Uh, the, the storm weighting allows you to select all your uh, simulations from HMS model, or you can weight them however you want or not select them. So it just gives you some flexibility on which ones to run. And then, of course, down here, you can select what output you want. So for this one, I've got it tell me uh, the inflow, so peak inflow, peak outflow, and peak stage, but you might do, like if you had a volume base, you might be like our critical duration was four days, you might be requesting the four day volume frequency, four day volumes out of it. So basically it's gonna go through and it's gonna run that. So this is 5,000 results. I think for this project, 5,000 is taking, it was like 
five minutes or so. It's pretty quick. Um, I can, I know I can run like 20,000 and about, yeah, it's about 20,000, 20 minutes. So it's, it goes pretty quick. Um, so if you really need to run a big one, like a hundred thousand, you can do it. It'll be a, maybe a couple, an hour or two, but pretty fast overall for doing a stochastic model rainfall runoff process. Um, so then we have the results where you're actually calculating, you can see, so that will just show the stage side of it. So this is 5,000 results with the, uh, for stage for a particular run. So um, you got, you can tell you, you, there's three different precepts and losses. And so you kind of got three different kind of trails going through there. This is the stratified results. So this is not what you would use for mm, your answers. Um, this is the, you still need to convert this into total probability. Um, luckily, Raft is doing that for you. And so it'll convert that all that information for whatever curve you're running into a total probability curve. So if we got this, um, we have this for the computed and the upper and lower. Now we have uh, enough information. We have the mean and standard deviation for particular volumes um, at the 10, 100, and 1,000 year. And so we could take that over into, so if this is a volume, we could take that over into um, best fit. If you are an army dam or FERC or somebody that didn't have reservoir information, you have a stage frequency curve you can use for your flood hazards. So that's the idea behind this tool. It's just pretty straightforward. You, you, you have precip data already available. You bring it in, you have an error reduction you bring it in, you bring in your HMS model, and you can run it um, however many thousands of results you need for whatever um, information you're looking for. So peak, free, peak flow frequency, volume flow frequencies, which is what we use in our studies a lot of time for the inform best fit and then for stage flow frequent stage frequency if you don't happen to not have because you can't really do rfa if you don't have any inflow or elevation data so this gives you a way of doing that so um yeah i think we'll just call it if we just want to do a quick introduction demo of raft let's see if i can i don't know if i can even attempt to go back um yeah, this is just more information. This is just what it might look like for a stage frequency. Um, with So you have your expected curve for your uh, the black line, and then you have uncertainty around it. So Raft is able to produce that for a dam that didn't have um, any elevation or inflow data. Um, again, the whole point of like this, it's, it's super cost effective because it's just a, a free tool that you can run and, and produce results stochastic results within a day if you have those other you have to prepare your hms model and get your error reduction but other than that it's a really cost effective way of getting a stochastic model to inform um, your volumes or uh, stage stage frequency curves if you need it so all right we'll call that anybody got any questions it was just this is just a quick introduction to a tool that we use on the side to help inform our volumes our precept go ahead so right now we're producing what you're asking for. So we um, we would produce individually the expected frequency in an upper bound and a lower bound individually. The we're adding new sampling options that can do uncertainty on along the AEPs. So, but yeah, it, it's we're defining the credible interval. It's not really a, we're defining the credible intervals a little bit differently. So, um, but yeah, we we're working on getting closer to that. So right now we just run the upper bound precip to give us our upper bound kind of thing. So 